President Biden is facing high expectations that he'll deliver on his promise to remake our nation's immigration system. But in order to find solutions for the thousands of migrants seeking a better life in this country, we've got to also look at the people working to stop them. That's where my next guest comes in. He is on a mission to uncover the deeper forces behind today's anti-immigrant movement. With me now, immigration lawyer and advocate Hassan Ahmad. Hassan, the origin story is important here. What set you out on this journey? And in the course of your discovery, what did you learn about the origins of the modern anti-immigrant movement? Uh, thank you, Alicia, for having me. Um, I'm an immigration attorney. I've been practicing for almost 20 years. And uh, I've seen it just get worse and worse and worse and harder and harder and harder to provide the kind of service to my clients that I wanted to. So I got curious about where the policies were coming from. And um, it was a picture of Chris Kobach, who was uh, meeting with then President Trump uh, right before the election, uh, or right after the election, rather, um, making the case that he should run the Department of Homeland Security. That's what led me uh, to understand these are the kinds of people that are going to be uh, in the upcoming administration, and we need to understand where they come from. And that all roads led back to a man named John Tanton. I found that his papers had been archived at the University of Michigan's Bentley Historical Library, uh, but then found that half of them have been sealed until 2035. Those papers show the ideological and conceptual underpinnings of the entire anti-immigrant movement. So we need to find out what they say. So I filed a, a FOIA, um, uh, uh, lawsuit in 2017 to unseal them, which four years later is still dragging on. Well, talk to me about that. Draw a line for me from John Tanton's framework to some of the policies around deterrence that we see today. Well, the most recent uh, example, I guess, was is uh, everything that, that Stephen Miller, uh, as the uh, White House uh, immigration architect under the Trump administration and the current, I guess, shadow war waging on the Biden administration, um, these policies that we're talking about, uh, uh, revocation of DACA, TPS uh, de-designation, uh, and even going back to SB 1070 and, and going back to 1996, the uh, IRA-IRA, the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, all of this was rooted uh, and started by groups in John Tanton's networks. So who told Stephen Miller where the buttons were and what levers to pull to do what he did? That's these groups. We have to know where they came from. A large part of Tanton's platform was the creation of these culture wars. How are we watching that play out today? It's a really good question. Um, Tanton was an avowed eugenicist. Um, he believed in the genetic superiority of white people over non-whites. Um, he not only took money from a group called the Pioneer Fund, uh, but he established a lifelong friendship with its long-term president, uh, Harry Ware. Um, and uh, one of the first uh, articles in his archive that I came across, the Extant Archive, uh, was called the, Pit, the Case for Passive Eugenics. Um, one of his favorite books was uh, a racist screed called Camp of the Saints, and I challenge anybody to read five pages of it uh, and, and, and not walk away in disgust. Um, this book was also a favorite of Steve Bannon and, of course, Stephen Miller. John Tanton loved the book so much, he actually acquired the rights to reprint it in 1994. So when he said, um, John Tanton said that as whites see their power uh, disintegrate, will they go quietly into the night uh, or, or will there be an explosion? Um, these are his words. Um, this is the ideology. Uh, under underneath this uh, this entire anti-immigrant movement, Fair CIS Numbers USA, um, they lie about the uh, origins of their uh, ideology and clothe it up in terms of uh, border security, which really means militarization, um, and uh, under guise of protecting American workers. But there's really uh, something a lot more noxious and a lot uglier that underlies their policies. And it's time they be exposed. Well, I don't think right white there. nationalists. Sure. 
stay right there for me because because there there is there's the source of some of this right and then there is a process by which it gets polished up and turned into more mainstream talking points that then no longer are as obviously tied to the origins of the source how does that happen how does how do policies that originate in this way end up becoming mainstream talking points that is exactly why I want to unseal those papers to tell that part of the story. You know, we can only tell so much and there's some pretty damning stuff in the extant archive, uh, but how John Tanton built this entire movement, um, how he was able to camouflage his white nationalism into something more mainstream that uh, has, has, has lived on past his death, um, that's a story I think that needs to be told. And so far, the University of Michigan uh, has resisted and fought tooth and nail to keep those papers secret. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.